Hello tout le monde. Bonjour. Good evening. Good morning from all over the world. Today we are going to write uh, our first smart contract, and it is going to be an election or a voting smart contract. So we want you know candidate to be able to you know to vote and to be stored on the blockchain. So how do we do that? Now we are going to use as you know Remix. It is actually a base browser-based IDE it is going to help us to write our first smart contract so we are going to use the Solidity programming language we are going to have other sessions to be able to talk about it but now let's get into you know the contract itself and see how to you know program it and interact with it so as I told you we are going to explain things better in other videos for you to be able to have a good understanding of what the blockchain is and how you can actually write your smart contract so with that being said we have to start so what do we need now we need to call a function not a function but you have to to, to declare the you know the you need to declare the solidity programming compiler version that you are going to use and it's actually here yeah, is 0.8.4 so we do that by calling pragma solidity 0 0.8 0 0.8.4 yeah with the special character here yeah, yeah so what do we need now we need to call a function Need to declare our smart contract by calling the keyword contract we gave the name election open close calibrates and we are going to write all our logic here so what do we need for the first time we need an administrator for that uh, election process so we need to declare an admin let's say address admin we are going to set the visibility let's say public and then we have our admin that has been declared so everybody can see the address of the admin so the election can be transparent uh, for other you know security major we can actually try to implement what we call a multi sql but now we are not going to use it now so let's continue what do we need now since we actually declare our constructor we need now to initialize our administrator in a constructor let's say constructor keyword yeah and then we are going to initialize our administrator let's say admin equal to msg dot sender and then you put the semicolon what does it mean it means that the person who is going to deploy that smart contract is going to be the address of the person who's supposed to manage so the address of the admin so msg dot sender is actually a global variable on uh, uh, ethereum blockchain and solidity programming language that denotes actually the person calling a particular function here it is a constructor function it is a kind of function that runs once and only once you know when the smart contract is deployed so we are going to move on so what do we need to do now uh, we are going to use a struct in order to group the variable that we want our candidate to have so how do we do that by calling the keyword struck yeah yeah let's say struck we give the name candidate we open and close curly braces and then what do we need our candidate to have we need our candidate to have an id let's say you in id candidate yeah we need our candidate to have a name string name 
yeah we need also to be able to count the votes of a candidate on a blockchain once you receive a vote from a particular voter. So let's say you int uh, vote counts let's say vote counts yeah and then yeah i think that is okay for that stroke now we need to let me explain here what i was trying to do so here we need an id for our candidate we need a name and we need you know a vote count to be able to track the number of votes that you know he has been received so in solidity you declare first of all the you declare first of all the type before declaring the variable that's why we say that solidity is actually a statistic type language because you declare first of all the type of the variable before you know declaring the variable itself so we are going to use a mapping you know to be able to retrieve our candidate we are going to store our candidate in a mapping let's say let's use a keyword mapping yeah we open and close parenthesis and let's give a public visibility to our mapping and we are going to give the name candidate yeah this name candidate and uh, we are going to see all our candidate here but now i've not finished with the mapping we need now to use a key a key value pair because the mapping you the mapping actually works with what we call key and the value now here the key is going to be an u in because we want to retrieve a particular candidate from an id so let's say you int and we are going to map it to uh we are going to map it to the stroke candidate yeah let's say candidate this stroke yeah yeah we are going to map a u int to a stroke candidate so that when you put one you can see the particular candidate that is actually here or actually store so don't bother about that we are going to go through the basics but now i just want to write a smart contract live for you to be able to understand how things work no that is it so now what do we need we are going to create a function to do what in order to a function in order to store a a candidate so let's say function store candidate yeah we are going to open and close curly braces parenthesis open and close curly braces but now we are going to put a parameter here a name we are going to declare it yes string may mori underscore name because we want to be able to store a candidate by his name and then is going to have a generated id so we are going to declare the visibility of that function is going to be public because we want everybody to see that function but we are going to add a restriction so that only the administrator can actually add a candidate so what do we need now we need to access our mapping uh what's the keyword of mapping is actually this one candidate so we are going to call it here let's say candidate and we want to retrieve a particular you know candidate by his id let's say id and then it's going to be equal to candidate this candidate stroke and we are going to pass an id we are going to pass also the name and we are also going to pass the position of the candidate so this is actually the id this is the name and this is actually the position 
of our candidate we have a warning here we are going to see what's wrong with that so let's continue and yeah let's continue now we need our candidate store or our function to start by one so that once we put a candidate it start counting by one how do we do that we are going to use the increment and id let's say id uh, plus plus but that ID should have been declared up so we are going to declare that ID up yeah uh, let's say u in ID yeah and once we are going to let's say put our candidate name here it's going to start by one okay 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 so now what's missing here we need to add a restriction because we don't want everybody to be able to call that function store candidate only the administrator can do that so we are going to use a require a require keyword yeah it's also a special function you know, to manage input validation on wrong input validation we are going to explain it in details so what do we need now we are going to say msg admin no msg dot sender equal to admin and then you are going to say you are not admin yeah no, it's actually admin equal to msg dot sender admin msg dot sender msg dot sender yeah so we are done we can actually try to test our function uh, that we actually uh, just wrote down so this is the first part of our our smart contract that is going to 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 manage votes on the blockchain so a quick recap we are actually trying to build a smart contract to manage votes on the blockchain to manage elections on the blockchain so we first of all declare an admin for that to manage the store of the you know the storing of our candidate so that is it because we don't want anyone to store a candidate apart from the administrator we also you know create a struct candidate you know to be able to view all the variables we want to manipulate so it's a kind of grouping the variables to be able to fetch it uh, very easily so that you can actually manipulate them yeah in an efficient way so i think we all set so we are going to test our smart contract the first part and we are going to move to the next one so thank you very much for our session